everyone. Today I've got your Solo A Star Wars Story movie review. We finally get to know what Han Solo was up to in the galaxy, but was this film really needed? So as far as the story goes, Ron Howard directs this Star Wars spinoff where it takes us on this journey throughout the life of a young Han Solo. Now, while the action starts off right off the bat, you see he's on a mission to steal uh, certain objects and in exchange for his freedom and maybe many other things that I kind of got lost in the action to really figure out what the heck is going on. Now, while it feels like this, this space western slash gangster film, I feel like it is also one of the weakest films in the Star Wars franchise. Not because it gives off a different vibe than maybe in comparison to the other films in the series, but I just felt like it wasn't a very well executed film as far as uh, the technique goes. And it's nothing against uh, having Ron Howard as the director, even though I'm pretty sure he was put on at the last minute when they were figuring out who was going to direct this film and maybe he wasn't the best fit for the job. Now this film does jump around a lot and we see in different points in time uh, Han Solo's life from when he was younger. It makes the story kind of a jumbled mess. As far as the casting goes you've got Alden Ehrenreich who plays Han Solo and that's way after Harrison Ford, I feel like, played him best, made his debut in A New Hope. And while he wasn't my first choice to play him, and I know that I had mentioned who I would have wanted to see play this character, even though he had, uh, in the form of Anthony Ingruber, who already played a young Harrison Ford in a movie, uh, but this iconic character, I think, definitely deserved a lot better than what he got, even though he does show off his charismatic side and his Lone Ranger side, or should I say Solo Ranger, which is how he even got his name in the first place. And even though he doesn't exactly get all of his mannerisms down, I feel like his interactions with Chewbacca were a special treat, especially when they first meet, which reminds me of a certain scene that happened in Return of the Jedi at Jabba's palace. And you've even got Amelia Clark in this movie who plays Kira, and she is this unlikely love interest of the film that I feel like could have been represented better. But is interesting to see how this all sort of plays out considering who Han Solo was, uh, you know, hanging out with her before he even met Leia. And I absolutely love Donald Glover who played a young Lando Calrissian and he just is amazing in this role. His persona is just acted down to a T and with his smile he's charming, he's suave, and he's definitely uh, somebody you might want to play uh, a card game with. Woody Harrelson who plays Beckett is kind of this military uh, type of leader and he's got this relationship with Thandie Newton's character. They all sort of meet in the Imperial Navy when there's this huge uh, battle sequence going on, which kind of feels like one of those modern uh, war films that you would see nowadays. It makes their roles something to care about. Unlike Paul Bettany's, you know, seemingly throwaway villain character, who basically I feel like is forgettable, most of the time and maybe better suited for a different type of film. Now the things that I liked about this movie was, you know, obviously the action and adventure, the whole Star Wars appeal was because of the fights in space. Also seeing the Millennium Falcon again, I just, ever since The Force Awakens, I was like, I really want to see uh, this ship again because it's just one of the coolest things in Star Wars. And at times, uh, it made me wonder, you know, Ron Howard made a movie called Apollo 13, and that's a space movie, but it's also very dramatic, so you definitely have a lot of these different themes uh, playing off left and right, and 
just a lot of cool uh, chase scenes as well. And there are a few comedic moments that I definitely uh, laughed at and just were pure fun to watch, as well as nods uh, and ties to the original trilogy as far as, you know, little nostalgic uh, sort of scenes. and all But unfortunately, the things that I didn't really like about this movie was that the editing was a bit choppy and it does jump around, like I said, as far as the story goes. But by the time the third act rolls around, it made up for the slow moving first act. And I don't know what was up with that so-called female villain because she was kind of irritating and I didn't really get some of these other side characters that they were sort of like adding on because you figure if you didn't see them again in any of the uh, later Star Wars films that they're probably throwaway characters as well. Overall, I would say that this movie still was entertaining even though it was a slight disappointment, but it was still very cool to see this character, uh, you know, and his story literally uh, unfolding on screen. And I would have preferred to see another character whose movie is definitely uh, far more anticipated I'm talking about Obi-Wan Kenobi's movie instead of a Boba Fett movie, but I would still recommend seeing this movie because I still think, you know, being in the Star Wars universe and enjoying uh, a Star Wars film, nonetheless, I think is always cool to see. So I would give this three and a half hearts on the heart rate scale. So let me know in the comments what you guys thought of the Solo with Star Wars story and as always, you guys can subscribe to my channel. I've got more movie reviews, movie updates, coming every week for a Child Thursday video. You guys can also like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. And I will see you guys later.